So in the last video I showed you how we go from this, where the compiler takes this and converts it down to this, which further converts to this. And then the compiler actually takes another step to desugarize this lambda expression, which you can look up in the lambda expression videos. I'm not going to take that step here. But hopefully you're starting to see past the magic. When you first write your link statement, and if, even if something as simple as this and it works, it it's kind of blows you away. And really, it's there is something mechanical going on here, and it's not very unusual. But I want to even take this further and demystify this more. Remember this where and this select. These both came from enumerable. When I hit F12 here to go view the metadata, I showed this in the last video, but basically there's all these enumerable methods. There's where, union, to look up. Well, we'll look at all these. Um, scroll to the top again here, and we see that it's just in this enumerable class. Well, there's nothing that prevents me from writing my own extension method. And if you remember the rules from extension methods, the compiler looks at the closest scope first and moves its way outwards. All right, so the closest scope, for this where, it's going to first look in the in our main class to see if it can find a where that is an extension method on something that's that in this case is an array, but array is I enumerable. That's why uh, I enumerable satisfies that condition. Uh, and since it can't find a where, whoopsie, in this scope here, then it goes further on to look at all these usings and, and eventually it comes into system link and finds this enumerable class over here. All right, well, I, I actually want to want to write this where myself. I think it's a very good exercise. I think it's very um, educational, intuitive. It helps you see what's going on. So let's do it. I'm going to static. Uh, uh, let's see. We, we could copy the uh, syntax. If I can get find it here. Uh, it's down at the end. We could copy the, send the, the return type here and make it all generic. Uh, I enumerable, I enumerable. But really, you know, just for this contrived example, we're using an int array. All right, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna say I enumerable int here, but then the uh, let's say where, and then for the this argument, I'm gonna say it's an int array. I I probably should be more general and say I enumerable, but but just because I can, I'm gonna say this int array. I'm gonna say ints, and then the second argument to where. In fact, it probably helps to look at it as a static method call, which it really the compiler eventually converts it into. But the first argument is our int array, and the second argument is this lambda expression that takes an int and returns a boolean. Well, if you remember from the uh, delegate videos, there's I, I can use func to do that. Func, I have, to, I have a func, it takes an int and returns a boolean, and we're going to call that the predicate. All right, and I actually like the word predicate. It's uh, if you think about the, what predicate means in the English language, we're going to predicate upon this. Or basically, the predicate, you know, some, something else, instead of calling it predicate, something that might make more sense to you is to call it gauntlet. Because <laughs> we're going to send every individual int through the gauntlet. And if an int passes the gauntlet, then, then great. They're worthy of being uh, returned from this where, where clause here. So... So we could call it predicate. That's more professional, more programmer, more probably increase your salary. I'm going to call it gauntlet. Right? I like gauntlet more. Uh, let's just for each in i and ints. If gauntlet run each int one by one through the gauntlet. If it passes the gauntlet, meaning the gauntlet returns true, then yield return i. And if you don't know what yield return does, go. Look at the yield return videos. But basically, I'm I'm going through all the ints that are passed through here, and uh, um, if it passes the gauntlet, then then return it. Okay. So I'm actually gonna let's do a little print statement here. Oopsie. Just to prove that my where clause is being used, I'm going to say where. Actually, my where. How about that? My where. And then um, looks like we're not actually consuming anything. If I run this, notice we've set up these queries, but we actually don't iterate through any results. I don't for each through result one or result two or result three. And I'll talk about that a little later, but oh, 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 of course we get build errors. Oh, like that. Extension method is supposed to be static class, of course. Let's play static. Static up here. Control MM to uh, reopen that. Okay. Control F5. Notice no output. We don't see my where clause happen anywhere because I didn't for each. I didn't consume what was being returned here from any of my queries. So let's let's consume one of them. And it doesn't matter which one. For each int worthy int. And the reason I'm calling it worthy is because that int passed the gauntlet. And the gauntlet in this case is if you're less than five, then we'll let you through. 
And it looks like two is less than five, four, but nine's not. So most most of these ints are actually worthy of the gauntlet. In fact, just for fun, I'm going to throw a 13 out here because it's not. So for each int worthy int in, and we can take any of the res these results because these results are all the same query, just rewritten by the compiler. Results three, uh, and then we'll write line worthy int. So if we run that, we see two, four, four, two, and we don't see the output from my where clause. Okay? And the reason why that is is because I explicitly set enumerable here. Alright? Which uses the the one in system.link. But if I use result two or even result one, notice the compiler at this point, it just sees numbers dot where and the compiler at that point gets to resolve uh, what this where where method is. You know, explicitly here I said enumerable dot where, but now it's up to the compiler, and the compiler is going to find our where before it finds the one in system.link. So, so let's go down here and let's do result two. And we now see that my where was used two, four, four, two. Thirteen and nine are gone. Okay, they're not worthy. They didn't make it through the gauntlet. It's kind of fun to step through this. So I'm going to F10, um, just co cover all these. I'm going to F11 into this. Uh, this for each here, notice it comes up to my where clause and it prints my where, my where, and then uh, each int one at a time. The first int, I believe, was a zero. No, it's not zero. That's the debugger helping me out. It's a two, right? As two, two worthy of the gauntlet, I'm going to F11 here, and it jumps us down to this lambda expression, which is just a method. Two less than five, true. So yield two, right? And then we jump out here and and we print two. And so and you see the debuggers just jumping all over the place here, running each one of these numbers through the whole system. And I'll, I'll do a future video on kind of what's going on here. But you really need to understand yield. If you don't understand yield, do go look at the yield videos. Um, get familiar with that before before I, I take you through the, through the whole machinery of what's going on here, because otherwise you'll be lost. But anyway, anyway, one by one, it's using my where clause. And I could, I could do my own select as well. It would be that hard to write a select here. Uh, in fact, that'd be a good exercise for you to do is to write select. I'm not going to do it here for you. 